Good morning, Black Hills. Today is Tuesday, January 16th, and we are on a packed schedule. Coming into the new year, Pack TV is moving from Friday mornings to Tuesday during homeroom, and you can always find us on YouTube using the link on the Black Hills homepage. In recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we have Mr. Haywood here to tell us a little bit about why Martin Luther King Jr. was important to history and our country. Alec and Aiden are back with some big news in sports, and Nia Hollenbach and Katarina Purdy are bringing you a special featured story on one of our very talented musicians. Pack TV starts now. So King drew for some really powerful examples. Luther had this powerful idea that, that one person with a just cause or a moral cause could go up against uh, one of the most powerful institutions in history. It's a citizen's inherent uh, duty to oppose a law that they think is immoral or, or oppose a system that they think is moral. And King learned from him the power of nonviolent resistance. And so he said to himself, well, what, what can I do and how can I lead? Um, and he kind of faced uh, racial injustice head on and he did it in a lot of different ways. And what staggers me to this day about King is his courage. He faced all kinds of abuse uh, for what he was saying and what he stood for, but he, he remained steadfast and he kept repeating the same message. Every human being deserves dignity. Look, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we still have more work to do around issues of justice, around issues of fairness, around issues of equality. But I think we're in a better place today than we ever have been in our history. And a lot of the reason for that is the work of Dr. King. Thanks, Mr. Haywood. Next up, we have some football players to acknowledge. Jackson Beck, first team quarterback, Jack Ellison, first team tight end and linebacker, Matt and Maddox Hodge, first team wide receiver and second team defensive back, who made first team and second team all Evergreen Conference. We'd also like to thank Brandon Dolby, Gavin Gordon, and Bearcat Lester for earning an honorable mention. Let's jump to the sports desk and see what the big news is. What up, Pack TV? Welcome back to Sports Desk. I'm Alec, this is Aiden, and this is Zach. Today we're going over a couple of topics. Aiden, how about you start us off? First of all, I want to talk about Nick Saban leaving Alabama. It's tiring. It was a huge deal in the sports world yesterday. I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite excited. Me too. As a non-Alabama fan, I've always, you know, I respect the guy, great coach, but when you're playing against him, it's a tough match, so I think, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. I think it was a good time for him to step down after that loss to Michigan. Yeah, they really it's handed it to him. Sad to see that last play be his last play. The last play of the Rose Bowl, that's his you last know, play. It's just, it's just what happens sometimes. It's the way the cookie crumbles, guys. So. Yeah. But you really think, gotta wonder, like, where is Alabama gonna go next? I think Alabama will go, this is a shout out to one of my favorite football coaches of all time, Garrett Baldwin. So SEC, Alabama, if you're looking for a new coach, we got your guy. He will lead you to all the national championships you want. So shout out to him. Thank you to the whole Black Hills football coaching staff. We all love you. But what are some other topics you wanna you wanna roll into here? I think we definitely gotta talk about Pete Carroll uh, oh, getting fired. I agree. That was a that was a tough tough day for me yesterday, seeing my idol Pete Carroll uh, go out like that. I actually started oh. chewing bubble gum because I saw Pete Carroll on the sideline chewing gum. So oh, I wow. thought if Pete Carroll big does inspiration it, of yours. Yeah, I was like if Pete Carroll does it, I might as well do it too. Yeah. Who do you think is gonna step up and take the spot? Uh, I just want to hear your opinion first. Who do you think is going to step up? I think Jim Harbaugh should take a step up and join the Seahawks. Leave think, Michigan, go to the Seahawks. I think he I, can bring us the Super Bowl. I think you're out of your mind, dude. I think You want to bring Jim Harbaugh, a stupid cheater, who has to cheat to win games, to be a Seahawks coach? Did you coach? see what happened? National championship, we take that win. Rose Bowl, we take that win. What happened to the Huskies? You guys look like Trent behind the camera, holding a big camera to see our plays. That's right. They did it. We all know you're not sneaking Jim think. Harbaugh. First of all, it was not Jim Harbaugh. Debatable, but I think it was him. We, we all know this. Uh, but the coach, you know, if he doesn't sign his contract, I'd love to have Kalen DeBoer there bring back some Huskies to Seattle. So if it's not if it's not anybody else, it's got to be uh, Kalen DeBoer. But rolling off the topic of football and into some football, our soccer specialist. Zach Kamek. Everybody give it up for him. 
Okay, recently in the January transfer window, we've had a few big transfers. Jaden Sancho has been released back to Borussia Dortmund on loan. Terrible transfer for Man United because all their other right wingers are awful. And then Eric Dyer to Bayern Munich. Pretty nuts because he sucks. That's absolutely yeah, insane. Yeah, that sucks, nuts. dude. I'm, I'm sorry yeah. to hear about that. I don't care. Okay. Is that all your soccer news for today? Yeah, basically. Why do you leave all right, thank you, Zach. Great having you. Hey Wolfpack, I'm Lennon Rivera and I'm here with an update on the championship football game that went down 10 days ago. Michigan came out swinging the first play of the game and ended up dominating the first quarter with an 11 point lead. After the first quarter, Washington's defense settled down against Michigan pretty consistently and gave fans a hope for a comeback and change in pace in the championship game. After a few failed drives on Washington's side and kicking a field goal, making it 13-27, they didn't score for the rest of the game. Sadly enough, Penix didn't get the chance to plant his feet and throw the ball like we have seen all season. Michigan then slammed the door on Washington with two additional touchdowns in the fourth quarter, ending the game with a score of 34-13. With this win, Michigan ended the Huskies' 21-game win streak. All right, Trent, what do, you, what do you have to say? Uh, I wanted to talk about the boys and girls Tumwater game on Friday. They did a pretty good, good job, and they uh, swept Tumwater. Oh, swept. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say, Zach? Well, I thought they gave a pretty good performance and a good fight, and you know, we got the result we wanted, so I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap. Thanks to Alec and Aiden for your thoughts. Now we're going to recognize one of our very talented music students with a story produced by Neil Hollenbach and Katarina Purdy. My name is James Kois. Well, like, I've been into music ever since I was really little, but definitely joining band in eighth grade because, I mean, I had instruments, but I didn't really play them, so I didn't never had anyone to teach me. But when I started band, I was like, ooh, okay. And then it started getting competitive because I wanted to be better than everybody else. But Landowski is a really great teacher, and I think um, he he's also a really, really good educator. He taught me a whole bunch of stuff, and so pretty much everything I know about music is because of him. So James is a phenomenal musician, and he um, he practices a lot. He plays his instrument all the time. One of the top two or three students, uh, just in terms of uh, musical ability that I've ever had, able to to work with others and to help teach others. And I've just really appreciated his attitude as a senior uh, of coming in and he's, he's um, he works hard every day and he's also willing to work with other younger students no matter where they're at. How do you feel he represents qualities at Black Hills High School? Oh, uh, James is amazing. I mean, just, you know, the fact that he, you can find him in the band room um, after school, working on things, um, you know, to always be improving his artistry and his musicianship. So that's totally pride. Um, academically, he's a great student, um, you know, and he just always, I think, is finding more ways to be involved and always, always challenging himself, which is what Pack Pride really is all about. Like, are you really striving for excellence and are you doing what it takes to, to take your performance to the next level? So he absolutely exemplifies that. Solo Ensemble is coming up later this month. We'll have another feature on an upcoming episode. Now, let's find out who won Wolf of the Week. What's everybody? I'm here with Chloe Watchman, the winner of Wolf of the Week. Here's your award. How do you feel that you won the award? Oh, pretty great. What are some things people can do to win this? Uh, just be yourself. And why do you think you won it? I don't know. Well, you won it because you all get good grades, you are kind, and treat people with respect. Congratulations, Chloe. That's all we have this week. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to show some Wolfpack pride. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching Pack TV. TV.